Thank you for tuning in to Cop with Comic. I'm Brian Cop, and we're here with Comic Ivan Arguello. Ivan Arguello, how the hell are you? Good, how are you? Am I saying it wrong? Please say it for us. No, that's perfect. Ivan Arguello. Because uh, in in a certain language, the L's are Y's. Yeah, it uh, will what in language? Spanish. Yeah. Okay, in Spanish. Yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah. And then uh, where can people see you do stand-up comedy on stage in New York City, and where can they find you online? Where can they find me online? Uh, you can follow me on Twitter and Instagram. And uh, what, are your, yeah, what are your handles on uh, all Ivana those? joke a lot. <laughs> It's uh, Austin Powers. Yvonne oh, Alba sure. Alba. Absolutely. Yeah. I'm an old dude. I know that joke. So th- <laughs> thanks for making the references my age. Yeah. Okay. And then where are you doing stand-up comedy in New York City? Uh, I run a monthly show called Lost Dog Comedy. Yeah. And what kind of, uh, you're booking that show, you're hosting that show. What kind of comics are you booking? What can people expect when they come to Lost Dog Comedy? What well, can they expect? I mean, uh, just a great show. Uh, okay. we, we book the funniest people we see all around, really nice. hardworking comics. And where are, is the show at different bars, or is it at the same one? No, it's always at Lorelei Beer Garden. Okay. So it's and where a beer, is that? Uh, it's in between Rivington and Bowery, Lower East Side. Oh, that's a yeah. nice location, right? Yeah, so it's a really fun bar. So they have, like, a beer garden upstairs, and then mm. we were able to get, like, a downstairs room where it's kind of got its own bar. And, and it's cozy enough for laughs. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Nice low ceilings. It's great. And then are you doing spots on, I mean, is it it's a monthly show, or yeah, how often is it? How it's uh, monthly. It's yeah. monthly, and then um, are you always giving yourself a spot on the show, or are you just hosting? Sometimes I'm hosting. Sometimes I do a spot. Uh, it it kind of changes. It depends what kind of heavy hitters you have on the line. Yeah, you're like I don't know if this guy wants half an hour. I'll give him half an hour. Yeah. Okay. And then um, when you're looking for just the funniest comics in New York City to be at Lost Dog Comedy, what are you really looking for? Like, what do I need to have in my act to catch the attention of Ivan? Just originality, you know, okay. like it's not really when people say like a diverse lineup of comedians, it, it doesn't <laughs> always mean white, black, yeah. you know, like it's got to be just different styles is really what I want. Right. And, and also the viewpoint actually has to be unique because there's probably different, you know, there's probably people of color, you know, who don't necessarily have a, an experience different from my own. Yeah, <laughs> no, absolutely. So, so you're thinking, I just want a different experience. Like we had uh, Tim Warner here in, in here earlier. Oh, yeah. He I talked about, yeah. Oh, yeah. He talked about being homeless in New York City for yeah. like six months. I was like, that is a unique fucking viewpoint. And so I would consider that a diversity, ad, you know, add yeah. to a lost dog comedy show yeah yeah and so um we're going to talk about today we're going to talk about nba sneaker culture have you been keeping tabs on everything going on with the all-star game you know the playoff race and the kobe situation yeah definitely i mean the kobe thing i, I don't know how you couldn't yeah but, um, yeah it's, and so uh, kind of what are your thoughts on that because you know first of all i'm hoping that bill burst stops taking helicopters yeah but they're even saying things like Kawhi leonard used to take helicopters all over the city and now he you oh, know, really? people are asking him questions about whether or not he should but um and then the ari shafir thing where he told a joke immediately afterwards yeah, and, no. and I, the the reflex to that is like i don't know it seems a little too soon but one interesting take i heard on it was in the context of like safety you know, like some comics, I thought it was Theo Vaughn or some other people who were talking about, I don't know, man, he might get his ass beat. Because if you think about how much, like, you know, I grew up in Chicago, so I love Michael Jordan. Mm-hmm. And if you think about certain tough, possibly violent people in L.A. who grew up loving Kobe and seeing him deliver them rings, like, yeah. I don't know if I'd feel comfortable doing stand-up comedy at certain smaller venues in L.A., would you? No, definitely. I mean, I, I, I think he, that. didn't he have to cancel a few of his oh, shows in New York? There were some bomb threats at New York oh Comedy Club, gosh. I heard. And now it must be even worse in L.A. because they love Kobe, right? Yeah, I I mean, I don't know. I was kind of stupid. I think he should have thought it over a little bit. But Yeah, and I, I guess, you know, the the idea that rapists should die, that that's one thing that, you know, not as many people would argue with, mm-hmm. um, although I've had argument about it. But, you know, meaning people have argued with me because, you know, um, usually the sentence for a rape is not death. But regardless of your opinion on that, the, the sentence for accused yeah. alleged rape yeah. is not death in a helicopter crash with your daughter. Yeah, no, yeah. definitely not. Uh, yeah. He just should have waited on the joke, thought it over a little bit, yeah. I think. And not immediately went on to what Instagram or think something that was very shareable so yeah. that everybody could be pissed off about it immediately. Yeah, yeah absolutely. If he had developed it on stage, it could have worked. Maybe. I don't even know. I've, I've seen some, some people try and pull off some Kobe jokes lately, and it's like yeah. I haven't seen one go well yet, Yeah, regardless and, of if it's funny or not. And I think Adam Amawala, I think he just went out to L.A., and, yeah. and he said something like, 
if anybody tells a Kobe joke right now, I probably will unfollow you or something. I'll unfriend you. And I was yeah. like, that makes a little bit of sense because it's too fucking soon. And and uh, and people love, I, I don't know, just like the daughter thing especially made it very difficult to tell any fucking joke about Yeah, Kobe. that made it a lot worse. Yeah, because she was pure as the driven snow, it would seem. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> yeah, she definitely had nothing to do with whatever accusations yeah. were going on. So. Yeah. And so, yeah, what do you think about the NBA right now? Uh, I mean, I do a lot of I do a lot of like fantasy basketball or you into oh, that cool. kind of stuff. Yeah, yeah, so. with the, uh, where it's it's weekly and also there's kind of columns where you know you you know you, you want to go for a guy who has both blocks and steals. Yeah, that kind of thing. that's the kind of stuff. So like I I actually watch a lot of really bad teams pretty oh, often because cool. they are padding the stats stuff like oh, that. Oh, and are you watching the full games live? Because I find myself watching certain teams the next day on House of Highlights. Where oh, nice. But it's like then, like I think Celtics blog or something had like a call for writers. I was like, I like the Celtics. I'm yeah. Like, I'm a good writer. And I was like, oh shit, I don't even watch the games live. I only <laughs> watch the highlights the next day. Yeah, you got to be right on top of it right as it's happening. And so you find yourself, you know, with five screens watching, uh, I, yeah. don't, I don't know who's, who's dog shit, uh, you know, the Knicks are dog shit, you know, Chicago Bulls yeah, are dog shit. Yeah, the Knicks are pretty bad. Yeah. The Bulls are pretty bad right now. Um, Golden State is a little bit bad by design, or you know they're. You know, they, they're I mean, they had hurt. an unfortunate string yeah. of injuries, and then I think just kind of are mailing it in this season. Yeah, they got what's they got what's his name Wiggins. Yeah, they just if he, with... he fits, but also he'll be able to be you know when they get the first pick or the second pick, they'll, mm-hmm. they'll be able to pair them with Wiggins, yeah. which is a bigger salary, and send them out for a star for that next star that they want next to Curry. And I think they also got some draft picks in return from oh, cool. uh, from Minnesota for D'Angelo Russell. Yeah, yeah. So and I think I, think I just saw it. him against the Celtics, and I think he was atrocious. Last you think night. So? Last, no, last night. Oh, last night. Yeah, I think it was like one for nine from the three point line yeah and of course he's a sieve on defense but also carl anthony towns is out they were playing the celtics last night right i think i think so i I watched highlights today yeah i think i mean he probably had to guard marcus smart which is (laughs) one of the (laughs) toughest guys in the nba that guy's incredible he was dropping dimes that i i wouldn't even believe yet because kemba's you know he's out with a knee thing yeah but also then hayward could run the point he was scoring a lot of points yeah yeah and so i i like the celtics a lot but i mean what do you think i mean do you like Giannis? do you like I mean, I just think he plays ugly basketball just because he's always just lumbering towards the hoop. Well, I guess, yeah, he's a little bit raw, but... Yeah. I mean, it works, and he's now just fucking raining threes on everybody. Yeah. yeah. I wonder how he'd fit in, though, when there were, like, maybe 10, 15 years ago when there were actually big men playing. Yeah. It's strange. Just, there's no centers. Yeah, so they would just chop him to shit, and he wouldn't get as far. Yeah. He'd at least get hurt. <laughs> yeah. He might, they, he might he'd, be successful. He'd, have some, trou- against, he'd yeah. have some trouble at the rim, and yeah. he'd have to shoot some threes, and that's not his strongest game. Yeah, but now he's just turning it on even from the three-point line. And who, who, What other player's game do you like? Who do I? I mean, like I said, I I love Marcus Smart's game. I yes, think, so you, really, he's kind of yeah. up there, even even if we're not talking Celtics, we're just talking general. No, you him like in Martin? general, I think he's one of the most yeah. underrated players. I, he, he blocks. He gets blocks. Yeah, oh, yeah, blocks, steals. He gets blocks, he gets steals. He's I guarding think, the toughest guy. He's I've guarding seen him the guard centers. LeBron. Wow. And it's he does a great job. Because he's got leverage. He knows how to use leverage, like the low center of gravity or something. Yeah, I don't know what it is. He's <laughs> stocky. <laughs> he's thick, as they say. Yeah. And so what, I also don't like, like, I, I got annoyed... Like, even when LeBron was on Cleveland and he came back from that huge deficit and he was pretty much playing Cleveland, mm-hmm. you know, before uh, Durant got there. Yeah. And that was ugly, but I was hate watching it. And through the hate watching, because, you know, LeBron, he's always just, he's pissed me off because he wins. Yeah. He wins against whatever other team you're rooting for. But Absolutely. I was hate watching him. And then I, you come away with a kind of appreciation of, fuck, I can't believe he did that against Golden State pre Durant. Like, he came back and he won the fucking thing. Yeah. But then I was also like dancing with Glee when it was J.R. Smith calling the timeout or whatever. Yeah. And he just fucked up the whole thing, and now J.R. Smith could be back on the Lakers. But um, I, I think, what was it? Is that true? Is J.R. Smith going to no, be back yeah, in the league? Yeah, they're going to test him out, yeah. Oh, my God. I can't believe any team is taking him back. Yeah, they, so they're, they're kind of testing him out. So I guess my point is, like, I, I, I didn't like the hyperbolic, the, the fawning praise articles, you know, whatever hyperbole is, that word, for LeBron for the past 50,000 years. It's, yeah. It's already starting with Zion. Zion, Zion Williamson. What do you think of Zion? And is he? I mean, I'm just sick of him already. You're sick of him already? Well, I mean, no, I mean, he's just a thick motherfucker, and he, you know, he's he's more like a Marcus Smart, where he can play any position, or, or like Bam out of bio. But he's bigger. He's... But he's just so fucking hyped, and you're worried about the injury risk. You're like, yes, I, I kind of. But they're also. I, I'm just more sick of the articles who are who are already starting with the whole. He's changed the game already. 
Oh, definitely not. I mean, he's <laughs> on the Pelicans, and they're not. They don't have the best record. They could yeah. make the playoffs. Yeah, they might make it. Yeah, I mean, he hasn't played most of the season. I'll give him that. And he was yeah. on a minutes restriction. But what do you think about the hype? Do you get sick of any hype, or do you do you kind of? Yeah, you it's fine an, with it? it's annoying. I think you need okay. to earn it a little bit. So stop reading articles and just start watching the games. You know, like yeah. I should just stop reading articles. Maybe, maybe okay. that's. I mean, yeah, you get the comments section, and it's people just saying the craziest stuff. Yeah. But he is good. I'll give him that. He's he's definitely pretty good. I'm worried about weight issues on the yeah. off season. The whole just being an upper body thick dude. Yeah. He might get some lower I body injuries. Did you injuries, see what he right? did to that sneaker? Oh, yeah. He, he obliterated it. it. Yeah. yeah. It just blew up. Yeah. And I think he got hurt for a while. Was he? Yeah. He was out until the tournament. He was, he was out for a long time. Yeah. Right. Last year. And then he came back in the tournament. He was actually thinking about going back, I think. But um, if he when he has a signature shoe, are you going to buy it? No, no, definitely not. Okay. And I, which ones are you buying? Are you, are you on the PJ Tuck wagon as far as sneaker culture? Like, are you trying to find rare yeah. the guy in the Rockets who's the sneakerhead? That is, just, that's PJ Tuck. Yeah, he yeah, finally got his big deal with Nike, I thought. Yeah, he's okay. a huge sne- I don't know if he's with Nike. I'm not sure. Uh, I think he had a bunch of he suitors. He is, finally though. signed, and I thought it was with Nike. Yeah. But it wouldn't surprise me if I'm wrong. And so are you, you know, when you're buying your own sneakers, are you doing it with, the United, you know, oh, I like this person, I like this sneaker, or this is a rare find? I'm not really buying like uh, player edition sh- sneakers or like okay. actual basketball sneakers. I, I collect uh, SB Dunks mostly. Okay. It's like uh, what is that? Uh, skateboarding shoes. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. So that's the kind of sneakers, it's sneaker culture you're speaking of. Yeah. Okay. Or or Jor- some older Jordans I have in okay. my collection. And so you're wearing them because they're stylish, because they're cool, because they have some nostalgia for you. Yeah. So some of these shoes have like they all have like different themes to them. Okay. So I have one uh, pair of Dunks that's like themed after Heineken and oh. it has like the star on the back and it's got a Heineken colorway. Okay. That's and so really you're like cool. a Russell Westbrook in that I'm gonna look at you during a, a stand up show and be like those sneakers are fucking cool. Looking. Oh yeah. Like. I don't even know the sneaker, the story behind those sneakers, but those yeah. are cool motherfuckers. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. There's, yeah. I, I, I feel like there's a lot of comedians that are into sneakers. I mean, definitely doing mics and shows, I see more than your average person. Yeah, I thought Danny Suggs was like, I wear all black, but I do, I do care a little bit about my shoes. And I was like, okay, that's interesting. Yeah, because you know, you want people to concentrate on you, but having a little pop of interest in you at, yeah. at your feet could be cool. You know what? That is true, though. I try not to wear anything like too flashy if I'm doing a set because I, I, I don't want them to be interested in my shoes. When also, I'm even the to shoes. Tell jokes. Oh, okay, and so yeah. what kind of what kind of jokes can they expect from an I, Ivan Arguello show? Yeah, uh, you're just like, what are you? You know, don't tell the jokes, of course, but what are you talking about? What's interesting to you? Is it autobiographical? Is it observational? Yeah, I do a lot of stuff about my family, uh-huh. uh, I have Latin American culture. That's uh-huh. the last. That's name. where the name comes from. Yeah, okay. so I do a lot of stuff about that. Um, I grew up, my, my family owned a grocery store, so oh, cool. I have a lot of jokes about working there. And is it in New York City that you, where yeah. you from? Yeah, so it's, okay. it's, a, it's a Key Foods in Brooklyn Heights. Oh, nice. Yeah. And so they owned it your whole life, and you've lived in Brooklyn Heights all your life, and you worked there? I worked there. Okay. I you worked never, or never current or past? Current and past. Oh, cool. Uh, forever. Okay. <laughs> I've lived there. And that will be yours? There. That'll be yours? Like, you will uh, be the guy who runs it, ultimately? Kind of, okay. yeah. When it's, not... it's my whole family. It's a, a lot of people are involved. It's not just me and my dad, but... Okay. Um, yeah, it's it's been a while that I've been working there. And so you have stories kind of about the parents, about, you know, the fact that you've owned a grocery store. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, then I do a lot of, like, pop culture jokes, stuff okay. about movies, some sports jokes. Yeah, so what movies are hilarious? What movies are hilarious? Yeah. Uh, Even I, reality stuff you get into, don't you? Yeah, yeah, I like, uh, I like that shows? show. I like that show, 90 Day Fiance. Have you seen that yeah, one? Yeah, what the fuck is that? Oh, it's great. And uh, how is it different from that Love is Blind one where you don't even see the person before you get married? Well, this is about people who are like online dating and yeah. they'll meet somebody from a different country. And the uh, only way for them to come to the United States is if they get married within 90 days on a certain visa. Oh, they made a show about that? Yeah. Isn't that some sort of immigration violation, you would think? Like you're not supposed to get married I guess just for the... not. I know. I mean, it's the it's called a K-1 visa okay. is the type of document that makes it legal for you to get married and have them come and immigrate to the United States. So the show's about that. But it, isn't it supposed to be like you're actually you're not supposed to be marrying just for the 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 you know you're not supposed yeah. to be marrying to become a citizen? I well, no, the show the show's not about like bringing in people here illegally. It's okay. like they think they're in love. Okay. And oh, okay. It's sometimes they're not in love, and that's part of it. And, and they the, figure it out in ninety days. It's very obvious to the viewer, and sometimes not to the person <laughs> who thinks they're in love, and, and that's so, the entertainment. And so, what do you think about that? Like, you know, when you bring up ninety day fiance on stage or whatever, are you at all relating it to your own dating life? No, not really, not okay. too much. You don't uh, bring like uh, observations that you've had about relationships past. 
Uh, not too much. I, 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 you know, I don't have a lot of dating experience. I've been dating my current girlfriend since I was like 19. So nice. it's like six years we've been dating. It's okay. a long time. And she's hanging out at the store. Yeah, sometimes. And we're not talking the comedy store. We're talking about Key Foods in Brooklyn yeah, Heights. Yeah, yeah. I don't tell people that. I just say the store so they, they can make their own decision if it's the you comedy store. You guys are in L.A. Not. right now? Comedy <laughs> store? Wow. Yeah, have her stop by. This is great. Yeah. And so you've been with her for a while. And are you able to talk about the stuff that happens in kind of long, and I guess it's not, I guess it's long-term relationships? Yeah, definitely. You are? Okay. Yeah, so what, yeah, what are yeah. some of the things that crop up that could be funny on stage? It's just like little things, okay. little arguments we get in that yeah. are just sometimes funny. Yeah. You know, like 99% of our arguments are about dishes, <gasps> which is, I guess, a good problem and a bad problem. You yeah. Know? It's easily solved. Yeah. But it's her turn to do it. It's usually it's it's usually my turn oh, to do no. it, and I won't. Okay. And that's the problem. And and then if you're not doing a spot on Lost Dog Comedy, which is every month, and what's yeah. the, do you have a certain date? Is it th- the first Thursday? You know, what date is it? Uh, it's usually the second Thursday, uh, second Tuesday of every month. Okay. Sometimes it's tentative. Next yeah. next month, uh, March 10th is the next show. Okay. And that's at 8 p.m. March 10th, 8 p.m. Lower East Side, and the place is called Lorelei Beer Garden. Lorelei Beer Garden. And then, do you know who's going to be on there March 10th? Do you kind of know uh, the names offhand? Am I yeah. putting you on the spot here? No, I'm. Can I pull up the lineup? Oh, please do. Yeah, cool. It's probably going to be a badass lineup because it's Lost Dog. Yeah. And the only prerequisite is quality. You know, I don't, I don't have it on me, but okay. uh, but we will, we will. We kind got of Dylan pass Krause it hosting. Okay. Yeah. And it's so, gonna be a good show. And so, how do you decide who hosts and who who headlines? Do you have that sort of thing, or is everybody just kind of splitting up the show? Uh, no, we do decide who hosts every time. It's either going to be me or the, my co-producer, Matt Summerstein. He, oh, cool. He hosts a lot, too. And then we like to have someone who's done the show before yeah. if they're going to host so that they have an idea of how the room is and what, what what kind of audience we get. Okay. It's definitely a younger crowd. And then, oh, a younger crowd. Well, that See, that's nice for, um, because you're a younger comic. Exactly, yeah. yeah. Definitely plays to me more. <laughs> yeah, he's, 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 a young, he's a younger comic who's um, Brooklyn Heights, just born and raised. And where are you doing comedy if you're not doing it at Lost Dog? If I'm not doing it at Lost Dog, most, mostly open mics, some okay. bar shows. Okay. Uh, there's a few that I help out on and they book me sometimes. Yeah. But, uh, Mostly open mics, though, I would say. Okay, well, thank you so much. I'm going to massacre the name Ivan Arguello. Yeah, perfect. And then across social platforms, are you Ivan Jokes a lot? Yeah, Ivana Joke a lot. Ivana Joke a lot. Yeah. I- Ivan, thank you so much. Yeah, thank you.